Hello, my darlings. Today we have another Bakugo story. Because, honestly, I'm kind of running out of money and everybody loves my Bakugo stories. So, uh, why not watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and uh, comment something down below. If you don't know what to comment down below, just tell me how your day was. I also have a Patreon you can donate to. If you can't, it's even more important that you do what I just told you because this way you can enhance my standing in the YouTube algorithm. And by enhancing the standing in the YouTube algorithm, you increase the chance somebody watches my videos who can. So, please and thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Hey. Read the message on your phone. Hey. He answered back. This had been going on for a few weeks now. Over a dating app run by the love hero, shot for the heart, you had been introduced to just the most perfect guy. He was only a year younger than you, had wonderful blonde hair, and somehow the most brutish yet sweetest smile. The boy was sending you on an almost constant supply of mildly lewd selfies. Like him freshly coming out of the shower with only a towel covering him. And it felt like you both kept on chatting through most nights. It was the perfect long distance relationship. And you hated it. But it had to be this way. The boy, Bakugo Katsuki, was a student of the Hero School UA. A place that you knew you could never go back to. Both out of shame and possible consequences. Besides, you would never be allowed to go there on your own. You sighed. Katsuki had just gone on another potential future fantasy. That simply was sounding too good to be true. By the way, he suddenly asked. I got a pass to leave school grounds for home next week. You didn't know they were giving out these passes. Good to know. And I was wondering if you want to meet up somewhere. Your face turned into a frown. The obvious answer was no, but his question was accompanied by a selfie of his, where he was just making the most adorable puppy eyes. When? You typed slowly. Just writing this word alone took five minutes of shakily pressing the virtual keyboard of your smartphone. Jeez, I was expecting a novel. He typed with a smiley emoji. Next week, of course. You rolled your eyes and typed. Fine, when next week? Monday to Wednesday. I'm allowed to leave after school has ended. You look over at the door of your room. You were genuinely considering it. When you didn't reply, he sent another emoji, this one having a worried expression. Would you lose him if you declined? I'll try, you typed. That's all I wanted to hear, was his reassuring answer. You sighed with relief and rolled over on your back your bed suddenly feeling much softer. Your phone vibrated again and you took a peek. Ah, uh, gotta go. Physical training starts in a bit. Talk to you soon. Followed by three heart emojis. God, you love this man. The question now was, how would you sneak past Tomura and Korogiri on Monday? You had joined the League of Villains a while ago. In fact, it was so long ago you had been part of the assault on the USJ. That incident felt like it happened so long ago. You had just managed to slip past US security after the embarrassing failure of the mission, thanks to your quirk, Prop Hunt. Your quirk allowed you to transform into various inanimate objects, as long as that object didn't exceed your body mass. Another restriction of your quirk was that you couldn't choose what you would transform into. So it was a gamble of either sticking out like a sore thumb, or bleeding in perfectly. 
Thank God your quirk had decided to work properly that day, and you were able to turn into various decorations that had been scattered on school grounds. If Tomura had been smarter, he would have used you for spy operations. And not for a full frontal assault. But he had later claimed that he had hoped you'd transform into something useful. Like a gun. Disregarding the fact that if you were to transform into a gun, you would not have any bullets or even a magazine. Another restriction of your quirk was that all the object's parts had to be attached and stay attached. And the only reason Tomura hasn't sent you back into UA to spy was because apparently they already had a spy. Luckily, your boss was attached to you. You would of course never admit it. But it was obvious. He never sent you on a mission since. And just let you lazy about in whatever the league's hideout was currently. Hey, before I go, texted your long distance boyfriend. Love you. Then he sent it a picture of himself giving a thumbs up. You squealed and hugged your phone. Thank God Toga wasn't here to tease you about it. Toga and Twice were the only villains in the league who knew of your little affair. Twice because he had accidentally walked into you while you were texting Bakugo. And Toga... well... it was Toga. Of course someone like her would get behind a secret like this. After typing a quick I love you and goodbye, you turned off your phone. Now you needed to think of an idea to get out of here. When Monday came, you still had no idea. Asking Kurogiri to teleport you was too dangerous. And both him and Tomura were sitting in the main room of the cabin the League was using as a temporary base. Pretty much all day every day. How does 3pm sound? Bakura typed. Let's go to the mall in the Dagobah district. I know it's a bit cliche, but... This would be our first date, and I don't have that big of a budget to go to an amusement park or a restaurant with you. Sorry about that. Don't apologize, you answered. It's fine, and you don't have to pay for anything. You sighed and then frowned. You weren't expecting a lavish date after all. But around 2 p.m. to 5 a.m., Tomura turned off all his video game consoles to take a nap on the main room's sofa. Sure, you could sneak past him, but Kurogiri was still in the room. And if Dabi just so happened to be there, well, that just turned a 5% chance to a zero. Uh, look, I I I'll, I'll try, okay? On the other end of the phone, Bakugo was sitting on his dorm bed face turned completely red. Despite his cocky personality, he never had the courage to ask anyone out. You were his first serious and actual girlfriend. He was nervous up until he had sent that last message. But reading that you try made him so happy he was genuinely considering doing a cartwheel and then bragging about it to Kaminari in Kirishima. His phone beeped and he looked back on the screen. It was an image of you lying on your bed with a seductive smile. The accompanying text said, Can't wait. With a smug grin he quickly made the picture his new background and got ready for class. You now had seven hours to come up with a plan. Thank God you tend to wake up when he does just to send a quick few text messages before you locked off for school. You put your phone on your beating chest. You were a little panicky and needed to breathe. You closed your eyes just for a moment to calm down and then you woke up covered in sweat. With shivering hands, you unlocked your phone. 12 p.m. Thank God. You still had three hours. Wait, three hours? Crap, not only had you missed breakfast, but you also forgot to come up with a plan. You raced to get dressed. 
It needed to look casual, but still good enough that it would fit for a date. Not like you had many clothes to begin with. By the end of it, you had chosen a red coat that reached down to your knees as a makeshift dress, and black tights you had borrowed from Togan. And you felt pretty enough. Now it was time to sneak out. Getting to the Dagoba Mall would take about 40 minutes, so you were confident you could reach it in time. You went downstairs into the large room with the bar and your exit. As expected, Tomura was quietly snoring on the sofa. But as soon as you entered, you got the attention of the shadowy barman. Good evening, Miss Fortune. That was your villain name. You had come up with it when you were 12. And adding the word Miss to Fortune seemed like a quirky pun at the time. Now it just felt really ironic. Hello, Kurogiri. You said hushed. You said in a hushed tone. It is rare you leave your room, miss. Are you going out? You nodded. Why and where, if I may ask? If you said none of your business, this would end badly, really quick. Um, I'd like to go buy some snacks? The man chuckled. How are you now, miss? Crap. Why did he know you didn't? Kurugiri took a glass in his hand to clean it. He hated stains on glass. Miss, if it's some fresh air you need, just say so. Your heart almost jumped out of your chest. Did he just lie for you? Quickly you realized that you were blushing. Hard. Uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 need, I, I need to walk a bit. You stuttered. Very well then, miss. Please return before supper and... He glanced at you. Please avoid large crowds and any heroes you might come across. Unlike Miss Toga, you have kept an acceptable low profile. And please keep it that way. The man thought for a moment before saying, In all honesty, with how things have gotten recently, soon you might be the only one with a low profile enough to buy more specific supplies. Slowly you sneak past Tomura, and once the door to the villain hideout was closed behind you, you felt as if a heavy weight had been lifted from you. Luckily by now you knew your way through the forest the leak's cabin was in, and without tripping once, a fact you were still proud of, you managed to reach the bus stop to downtown. With anticipation you look down at your phone. Bakugo had sent you a message saying that he was now on his way to the mall. Luckily, the bus stopped right next to the Grand Jewess building. And just when you stepped off the vehicle, a voice shouted your direction. Ha! <laughs> I can't believe it, you actually came! Bakugo! You said, happiness filling your entire being. He was a little bit smaller than you expected. But you like that. He was wearing his UA uniform and had a bag strapped around his shoulder. Also, he was out of breath. Uh, sorry, I uh, didn't have time to change, he said with a blush. It's fine, you said with a gentle smile. The uniform suits you, he grinned. Makes you look more mature. I like that. He nervously scratched the back of his head. Oh, well, enough about me, you. You, you look wonderful. The compliment stung. It was rare someone said nice things to you. Now it was your turn to blush. So, wanna go in? He said after a minute of almost awkward silence. Yes, you said happily. You knew meeting up with your technically... You knew meeting up with your technical enemy made you a dirty little traitor to the leak, but you didn't care. Bakugo was wonderful, 
and you hoped after this you would meet up with him many more times. After all, you were in love.